and I'm live. How you guys doing? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How you doing, babe? You have allergies. So welcome to Mind of the Founder, episode 11. We're going to do a little announcement today that I've been excited about telling you guys about. Um, dealing with Gary Vee. Um, long story short, we'll go over it later, but meeting with him tomorrow. 15 minute meeting with him. So we got to make it worth it. Um, love this dude. He's great. Um, check him out if you don't, if you don't know who he is, Gary Vaynerchuk. He's Facebook slash Gary on face on Facebook. Um, so, um, and Gary V pretty much on everything else. V E. -E. So anyway, I did that, but, um, yeah, how you doing? We're, we're doing a uh, minor founder for minute. We got a busy tight schedule today. Um, so we, and we've got some work we've got to get done before we go meet with, um, do our plans. So we did it here instead of going to the coffee shop. So we're, I'm drinking water. I got the girl from Starbucks this morning. All right. So what are we doing? Let's go. Um, you want to start the questions? Mm -hmm. All righty. Here we go. And thank you guys. Sorry, I'm trying to pop my neck. I thought you didn't. No, I'm trying to pop my neck. Um, thank you guys, the ones that have um, submitted uh, questions. Keep keep them coming. And yeah. Yeah. So. Um, okay. Let's go. All right, first question. I'm starting a clothing line. What's your suggestion on doing Brazil ads? What? You must not, you must not pay attention to me because I don't know fucking shit about digital ads. And that's one of my problems actually, um, or that's one of my weaknesses. Um, digital ads. So I know obviously that's where it's going. Um, I'm not trained on them. I don't know much about them, but I can say I have used them and I have some experiences with them. So everybody talks about how great Facebook ads are. Um, well, I actually have a different opinion. I do think they're great depending upon the money you're putting into them. Um, because I've, I've come to find out that the more I, if, unless you're putting in, in my eyes around 10 to 10,000 plus, I don't think Facebook has a good uh, return in, in my, from my experience. So, you know, I'm a, I don't have that type of budget. So when I put down money, it's like, you know, 100 there, 200 here, 500 probably tops for a campaign. And yeah, we'll get some likes, we'll get, you know, this and that. Um, but we're not, we're not getting the traction. It's because you've got companies out there that are giving fucking, you know, paying Facebook tens of thousands of dollars every month. So the more you pay, the, the better you're, you know, shit's going to be, um, in my opinion, I don't, once again, don't trust me on this. Uh, I think you learn by doing, go out there and dig into Facebook and figure out, I know that it's the best when it comes to fucking targeting. You can, you know, this, you know, why don't you chime in on this, babe? Cause you actually, this is kind of, you know, your realm of, you know, you're familiar with it. Yeah. Well, I don't totally agree with the tens of thousands budget. I think if your your target is narrow enough, your budget doesn't have to be as big as okay. long as you're super targeted. Okay, that's a very good point. So I wouldn't discourage people if they. Always I'm not. I'm not trying to discourage. I definitely don't want to discourage anyone because fuck, like, like I haven't figured it out. Obviously, so don't don't be following my footsteps. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Also, it's kind of like what I did for you know the current company I'm with. Um, I played with really small budgets. I was doing like $100 campaigns for two weeks mm -hmm. just to gather data to see what was working. So maybe if you don't have much of a budget is all is to just try playing with smaller budgets, but experiment, not expecting anything from it, but it's research. Yeah. It, and when I was, when I was doing it, you know, I was going through and, and I was targeting, I was tar targeting the areas that we were performing, you know, the best on, um, online sales. Um, so for, uh, targeting those areas, targeting the, the, literally the demographic of the person. And then on the psychographics, I was targeting the people that, you know, are interested in, um, um, organizations about children and give back and this and that. And I didn't see, but to your point, I, I'm not that experienced with it. So maybe I wasn't doing, um, doing the targeting well enough. So, um, yeah, I would say just try it. 
Um, I, from what I read, um, Facebook is where it's at when it comes to ads. Mm -hmm. So, um, and it also depends on what you want out of it, right? Are you looking for just ex exposure or are you looking for, um, you know, a sale? You know, what do you want out of the thing? Um, because, you know, everybody, you want the sell in the end, but you, mm -hmm. you know, you can't hope for the sell to come right away. You got to build your, you know. Yeah, well, yeah. well, what do you think of pay per click, ver Google versus keywords versus Facebook? Oh, Google for sure, only if you have a big budget to play with. Because Google, you're competing with everyone on the web bidding for like certain keywords. And if you can't afford to bid as high as them, and you know, even if you do bid higher than them, but your budget is like an eighth of their budget, you're just going to burn out and then they're just going to continue running for like, you're going to get Monday coverage and Tuesday through Sunday, someone else is going to dominate your keywords. So Facebook is way better for than like Google ads at this point. Okay. So let me ask you this, because they might not know, and I'm not even that familiar on, on it. So the way I think it, the way I understand it, well, first off is keywords the same in the same realm as pay-per-click like are yeah. you using k keywords in your pay-per-click campaigns right yeah so if somebody types in clothing that gives back right mm -hmm. whoever's paying the most for that keyword will hit the highest mm -hmm. right on, on the google on the on, on the search results ba but is it all pay or is it also has to do with your google ranking right so me right now my google ranking probably isn't near as good as say spiritual gangster mm -hmm. um or somebody like that theirs is probably way better well, what happens just say you know hypothetically if i fucking paid way more than they did for mm -hmm. keywords but you know or not even way may i paid more like at what point is it mm -hmm. that you know if they were paying and their ranks there mm -hmm. boom they're going to be number one and if i'm paying you know less it's down so what happens if if I pay more, but my rank isn't as high as theirs. Okay, so to answer that question, your rank, like your Google score, your website, determines what rate you can bid on a keyword. So say like you're bidding on clothing and the bid for the day for a really good score website is like $5 a day. For a bad score, that it's like ten dollars a day so it doesn't matter oh, it's like so if, i see if you have to bid 10 to do what they got to do at eight then okay. you get the first result i get no it i what. get it get it get it yeah and then if we can because i know some people want to know and i you know if i don't what are the the key points that go into the google ranking from your for knowledge like what uh -huh. is it that that helps boost that I know there's a lot of things, but what are like the three things that you should focus on your website the most uh -huh. to get, you know, ranked higher? So the best thing is making sure that the website is built correctly where it's user friendly. Because if it Google crawl, well, so, so if it's not user friendly, you're going to have a higher bounce rate. But that's rate. subjective. No, you're going to have a higher bounce rate. But I'm saying, yes, but I'm saying. People are I, leaving the that, site really people, quick. But, That's a bounce rate. I, yes, I understand what a bounce rate is. But what I'm saying is the people watching, like what I think is an easy website, click up, uh -huh. like whatever, um, user friendly. So my mom doesn't, right? And what I think is hard, so and so doesn't. So when you say user friendly, and I understand that's going to tie into the bounce rate, but telling somebody to make your web, mm -hmm. you need to make your website user friendly. Nobody's out there saying, I'm going to build my website that's not user friendly. You know what I mean? So what is it as far as uh, the frequency of updating, um, using uh, tag work, like that, something okay. that they can physically do instead okay, of. I can give you a few things. So okay. one important thing is if you have any content outside of your website and it's promoting something on your website, it better link directly to the, the right landing page. Otherwise, if Google recognizes a lot of like incoming links are just bouncing off right away, they're going to say your website sucks because people are bouncing off your page really quick. And it's because you didn't put, you didn't link the correct landing page to whatever offsite. So they got you're frustrated doing. and left. Yeah. And then Google's just like, oh, this is a bad website. People aren't, it's like irrelevant to the Google search because Whatever they were looking for, so they, they didn't find it. Wow. Yeah. Well, 
Well, I'm telling you what, thanks for that question, whoever, because I just like, I honestly, and I shouldn't know all of, the, all of this, but knowing it, well, it's just, I, I, I hear this now and I get it now and I'm sure I've known all this before, but in six, six months from now or three months from now, if I still don't get to focus, uh, you know, a big portion of my energy on it, it's going to go away in my head because, mm -hmm. and that's the problem. It's like the stuff, it's great, but it's still hard. And when you don't have the time to update and do all of these things, blah, blah, blah. But then, okay, so that's great. Landing mm -hmm. pages, your li link backs, but the link backs need to be correct and not right. bouncing. Or relevant. Or, or relevant. like okay. landing page needs to be attractive enough. Okay. Um, so once the person's on your site, the more links they click on, the better the score because it just means your website has engaging content. And then another thing is, is yes. it the number of link backs as well? Backlinks. Or backlinks, yeah. To your website, does that help? Uh, or is well, it the frequency and, and quality? And... It's the quality of the backlink. But quality means somebody actually has to go there. So if I have 100 websites that I create and just put backlinks that are good backlinks, but, but, nobody, goes, yeah, but nobody goes there and clicks it. Yeah. Okay, okay. Um, and that's probably why they do that. Yeah. Because people have thought about People that. create bots. Just okay, is there create. another one? And then we'll move on. Um, like another big one that you think that's important. If you had to pick. I would just stick with like, um, you know, having like searchable terms on all your, each page um, and indexing your pages often with Google. So that basically indexing means you're submitting like your pay, your new page that you created to Google and say like, hey, Google, can you add this to the web so that it can be searched? So if you don't index your pages, then you won't be found. What happens, what's this term on the over-indexing that I hear sometimes? Um, mm -hmm. But it's something, maybe I'm, I don't know, it's, it's, is there a way to over-index? Like, I don't know, add too many things or keep, like, where they're like, you guys can't figure your shit out? Or, I don't know. What I don't even know if it's a thing. I just... I, I've, I've, I thought I've heard that term before. It could be incorrect. It could be something else um, that has nothing to do with this. Let's I just make your pages like. See, that's the thing. I haven't. I haven't. Rich, you know, like. Since I signed up or since I created the Google Analytics account, I haven't even updated uh, updated our. I haven't. I haven't indexed our our site in a while, basically. Well, I get. Well, we just had our new website built. I, yeah. So I'm sure they find it. And you haven't it. added, yeah, they have to have done it. Otherwise, yeah. yeah. All right. So anyway, yeah. No, that was a great question. And um, I like that because I, I don't, once again, I don't know that much about it. All right. Let's go. Later. Next question. Um, okay. So question, how do you find time to do everything every day on your own? Um, I don't. <laughs> it's, I have a. It, it just, it's like rollover minutes uh, on your, on your phone. Um, rollover time. I, I have, I have like a, a long list and I'm still trying to figure out what, you know, as, as long as I've been doing everything and working and working by myself and on my own or for myself or as an owner. So I got to do my own shit. I don't have to give anything to anybody, um, which makes it difficult. You know, it's, it's easier if it's somebody says here, do this. It needs to be done by this. For mm -hmm. me, there's so much shit that needs to be done, and it's up to me to make the decision on what priority is. And there's a difference between urgent and important. Mm -hmm. And um, it, but it's a it's a very very fine line there. And this is part of the reason I you know I I've, I've moved to offices or or gotten an office downtown LA. Um, I'm going to be partnering up with somebody. It'll go to this, uh, uh, the question, I promise. Um, but I'm going to be partnering up with a guy that I've known for years, worked with in the business world for years. He owned a line called uh, Love Nail Tree. Uh, his name's Tyler. And um, Tyler and I, I'm bringing him into the company to help me with, with some of these things. And it's productivity is one of them. Because so, there is so much stuff to do. And the more we're growing, the more demand of my time there is because there's more opportunities, more things that, you know, people are approaching us about or, you know, things that I'm coming up with or the girlfriend comes up with. 
Um, so it's difficult. So I'm working on it. But how I do it now is I have a list um, um, of my to do's. And I, I, I go through them Well, I try to write them all down. But the problem is I fucking throw the paper out and then I bring it back. But what I would suggest and what I'm about to do is I'm about to start doing working with Tyler and we're going to come up weekly with the things basically putting everything out there on the wall, like what needs to be done on like a separate post-it note. So each task or each item is its own post-it note. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take all of those post-it notes and we're going to basically um, put them on the wall in order of priority and try to, and I've tried to do this before, but it's still, it's hard because things pop up. You know, you think that's a priority and it changes, which is okay, but we just change that. And from what I've read and what I believe is very, very productive is work on one thing and don't flip until you completely finish it because what happens is i go fucking 50 percent in but i'm at a stopping point now because i can't go any further without getting feedback so then i'll bounce to something else and then i can't go any further and i'll bounce and then i'm half pregnant on fucking 20 items and none of them are getting done so this is a part of why i'm partnering um so if you're struggling with it um and you figure out something that's working working let me know because i'm constantly um, adjusting my schedule. Um, tr I'm just figuring out what works for me um, and trying to improve, trying to improve, trying to make it to where every, you know, every day I'm getting more and more stuff done and uh, which will get us to where I want to go faster. So that, that cover the question? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Any input? Any thoughts? Uh, what do you like? The girlfriend, um, actually, I'd like to announce this, announce whatever, but. Um, <laughs> the, prefacing to make it lame. No, no, I'm saying it's a tangent, but it's in a, it's about the girlfriend. I'm really excited. She just um, accepted a position at um, a new, uh, you, you, you say it. The, the, she, Milk and Eggs is the company, yeah. and it's a it's a delivery produce uh, service, um, and she's going to be working from home. And which right at the same time that I'm transitioning out of home. So it's like a, uh, it's my home office. now it's her home <laughs> office. Um, but I, think, I work better alone. Yeah. I find just being alone, well, well, getting I, stuff done. Yeah, I, I was too, but I've pretty much like, think of how long, right? There's only like, there comes a point and that's where I am. It's like, there comes a point now where it's like, okay, I was cool few years ago, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of you guys don't know this, last last January when I was changing the business model from e uh, B to, B to C only to B to B, like mostly B to B, um, I, uh, I had been working by myself because even with my last company, you know, I was, I was in a fucking tunnel basically <laughs> working you know, 80 hours a week for four years. So I lost my communicate. I felt that I lost my communication skills. So last January, I went out and got a bar a bartending job because I bartended for years back in the day. Um, and, uh, and bartended for three months so I can improve my um, communication skills. Remember that? Mm -hmm. And so and that's what happens is after you work by yourself for so fucking long, it, it, it starts affecting you and, and, and not maybe mentally, but it's not my mental psyche that's fucked. It's just my productivity. Um, and so, yeah, so I hope you continue to work or can do it after years of it. So, mm -hmm. Yep. I'll just sit in a room full of people and get that yeah, out of my I need, I need communication. It's All not right. being around people. I need to communicate. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go. Next question. We had another one, right? Yeah. Oh. All right. Uh, do you think doing little shows here and there to build your brand is worth the time? Should I be discouraged if I don't make my money back? What type of shows? I'm guessing like kind of little shows like we do, like shop walk and me. Okay. Like the little like markets. Yeah. Um, yeah that's good. Well, does it say how old the brand is or anything? Nope. Well, I guess it would be a young brand if he's asking this, because if he's not, 
uh, if he was Otherwise, he'd be like, like, oh, yeah, yeah now that's what he's doing. Yeah. Uh, well, no, there's two different business models. I know, but he said little shows. Those aren't little shows. Yeah, right? but either way, there's no, either way, um, they're just two different business models, regardless if it's little or big. There's little of those B2, B2B shows too. So anyway, um, well, I think they're great to do. I really do. Um, it was something that when we started the company, this was uh, something that we, we, we made it a point. I made it a point. I wanted to do a lot of little farmer's market style shows um, and try to get the brand out there because a it helps you get rid of inventory and which is great always great but i don't know probably more importantly it helps you um, get your name out there and it, to the point of uh, being discouraged if you don't make your money back you know it's always you're going to be discouraged you know it's like Ugh, but i would say don't <laughs> because at the end of the day especially in the beginning, people walk by, it doesn't matter. Like they, they've never seen your brand. They, they don't recognize you. Like they don't trust you. They don't want, you know, it's, it's like that. Um, after they see you a few times, they start, mm, this must be a brand that's about something, you know, it's, it's, it's like doing a trade show and to the B2, uh, the B2B people too. Cause this, this, as far as being discouraged, we've done one um, B, well, we do market LA market um, every, we've done, I guess, two trade shows, mm -hmm. uh, Alt and um, Active Collective. We got Active Collective again, and, 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 and there's, Active Collective is pretty expensive, but it's a very good show. But this is something important that I've got to remember too, because we're going to be doing more and more of these, these very, they, they're not cheap, but you have to do it to get out there. And sometimes you might not you might not make your money back on a first trade show especially with a b2b one because these stores don't know you they want to come to the show and see that you're at the show a brand that's going to be there and continue to to go um and they don't want the one hit wonders they don't want the ice ice baby you know you're here to you're here at the show to this this season and next season you're not it's not good for a brand to skip those type shows so it, it goes into the same from the B to C. These people, they got their brands probably at the places they're going, the show they're going to buy from if, if they're there. And after they see your brand a few times, we get people now that come in and they're like, oh yeah, we've seen you here a few times now. And you start to gain that trust. We're not just one of these fly by night fucking companies. Mm -hmm. So if you don't make your money back, don't look at it in that way look at it what the long-term value is like it's you you're it's a part of building the brand and just getting you know but but while you're there at the show don't fucking sit on your ass and play on your phone oh yeah definitely. don't do that you better like you make it a point to try to tell everybody shit you know what i mean and it's it's hard some of the people you know you, you read some people they, they, they'll do the purpose thing but if anybody shows you any kind of interest just be polite say you I always say, give them, tell them the time that you're going to do so they don't fucking think, oh my God, yeah, I'll listen to it. Like, listen, if I get 30 seconds of your time, right? And then they already know, I'll fucking give you 30 seconds. And then you tell them. And then chances are they might not buy anything or whatever, but they're going to hear it, think it. And if they like it, good. And most, sometimes they do. We have a very good conversion rate when people hear, mm -hmm. hear our story. Um, but yeah, don't get discouraged. And I, and, and to the big part, I think it's a great thing to do. I think they're great. I think they're great for building it. Um, but it also makes sure your target, like your audience is there. Yeah. I was going to say, yeah. that's the most important thing. Make sure it's a right show. Yeah. You know, we, otherwise it'll waste time. Yeah. Our shirts, our shirts aren't, um, aren't inexpensive. You know, our, our, our t-shirts are t-shirts and tanks alone are 44 to you know $55 $54 um, MSRP not so we can't go to yeah. a flea market and sell because people would love our stuff there but if the person in the booth beside me is selling a $25 tea um, that that doesn't that doesn't help that doesn't work so make sure the audience is there um, and also there's a lot of shows that only cost a few hundred dollars that you can do uh, you don't have to invest like you know 15 some of them are 15 uh, you know mm -hmm. when you get to the b2b's those are five eight thousand dollar shows so they're hard so yep next question last question okay 
How important is it to trademark your logo and tag? I love this. This is uh, how important is it to trademark your logo and designs? Mm -hmm. So yeah, this is a good one. And I might hurt some people's feelings on here. Um, if, if, but this is just what happens. Um, people that know I've been in this industry a long time, they, a lot of people try to tell me, you know, I, and, and I mentor um, a couple brands uh, because I like helping people like they're, they're where they were at that point. And I'm not anywhere far once again, but I've, I've done enough fuck ups to, to know more of what not to do than what to do. Um, so, so I help younger brands early, you know, brands that are younger than me or the people, the, the people starting, it doesn't have, they don't have the experience. And so I've had a lot of people say to me, come up to me when we first start, not these people that I'm talking about, not the people I mentor, but, um, I've had a lot of people come up to me knowing I'm in the industry and say, yeah, I've got this idea for a brand, blah, blah, blah. And they start telling me and they say, we, um, yeah, we, we, we've got our, you know, we're, we're in the process of trademarking our logo and we're going to get our, um, we're going to get our, uh, our, our fucking designs trademark. And I'm like, why? And so I'm not a fucking attorney. So don't take this as legal advice. This is just my opinion. Nobody gives a fuck who you are when you start. So if you think somebody's going to be coming to try to take your fucking logo, you're out of your mind. Unless it's something that's so amazing and it hits like that and just explodes. Mm -hmm. Like chances of that happening are very slim, right? So to to spend the money cuz money money runs out. Money runs out when you how much ever you think you have and it's going to be enough. Chances are it might not be. So I don't think using your capital, like your, your initial money on a trademark to protect yourself so nobody steals your shit when nobody wants your fucking shit, nobody's heard of your shit. Um, I think it's crazy. Um, and then on the design side, you know, there, so many people think that designs are easy to trademark and you can do it. It's no, like you just got to change one little thing and your trademark doesn't matter. It has nothing like has nothing to do with it. So, um, yeah, that's, I, 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 once again, I'm not an attorney. And, and the reason I say this is because I went, I've experienced this before. My first company I started was tagless. And this was in, it was, I have partners while I was in the military. It was in the year 2000. 2000, yeah, this is 2000. Yeah, that fucking long ago. 17 years ago, I started my first line. And it was called Tagless with the point of we were going to put, um, we were, were not going to have uh, tags in the back. We were going to have um, just labels, uh, print the label. But no, actually, we were going we to put the label on the outside. This is before people were like printing labels on the inside. And so we we're going to be tagless. And this is before Hanes had come out with it. And what we did was we ordered some shirts. We, we sold them out of my barracks room and flipped it, took that money that we made um, and bought more shirts, right? And we stacked up to like, it was, I think we had like $1,800 we did in two weekends. And this is in 2000 selling fucking shirts out of my goddamn uh, barracks room. And... We, were, we came together, what should we do with this money? And I thought it was so important to, I was, the, I was the one that had to deal with this back then. We just threw whoever could do whatever. And I suggested that we get trademarked. And so we took all the money that we had just made and put it in towards, a tr uh, uh, put it in towards this trademark. And then we didn't have any fucking money to buy any more shirts. And then that kind of slowed it down, and then we all got deployed. Um, a few, and a few of most of us got deployed like within the next three months, and then it kind of just fell, fell off to the side. So, um, yeah. So I personally, but if but if you come up with something and it and it gets knocked off, and and don't come to me crying, cause, and it's like if somebody steals your shit, are you do you even have the money? Do you even have the money to fight it? 
really? It's like, so anyway, I, I think until, until you get to the point where you got a demand out there, but then what happens, it's, it's not even America you got to worry about. It's the other countries. And that's something other people don't realize either. Um, I, Ivan, I, I agree. I agree. It's the girlfriend that wants, like, that is asking me to grow the hair out. I, I don't, I hate Who's it. Who's making a comment about your name? Ivan. My buddy from, Ivan. My buddy from Erlen. Erlen. He loves pickles. Actually, oh. he hates pickles. Okay. Um, used to prank him all the time. I love you, uh, Ivan. So, um, yeah, so what a lot of people also don't realize, you just don't trademark and then you're done. Like, you've got to get trademarks in, in different countries. Every country's different. So the big country, China, is the one that people, like, they do a lot of knocking off over there, obviously. So it's like, if you've got a good idea in America, unless you're going to go out and trademark in Japan, like it, my last company at groceries, like, we, you know, we had a trademark in Japan and in America because we had gotten to that level at that time where we needed to. Um, and we had exposure in Japan, so if we didn't have a trademark there, we could have gotten fucked. But, um, and, and trying to do all those trademarks, it just gets expensive. So I would suggest no. So, um, and that was the last question, right? I need to free that. Go blow your nose. I'm holding your phone. So, um, um, I would, I, so I wanted to say, once again, I'm, I'm meeting with Gary V tomorrow. And I haven't announced it um, until today, just because I'm not, I'm not, I don't, I don't really like talking about stuff like that because I'm always scared that it's going to, it's not going to happen. And um, Gary Vee is a very, very um, sought after person, I should say, and his time is very, very valuable. And he, it's it's his it's his greatest asset so i'm very very appreciative that um he's going to give me 15 minutes tomorrow and um i we're beating ourselves up trying you know i i don't want to wait to, i want this 15 minutes to be the like very productive and no no fucking i don't want to ask him anything that's gonna be like, why the fuck do you waste your time on that why'd you do that so um i'm excited about it I'll give you guys an update at some point in time. I'll be um, Instagram storing and Snapchatting tomorrow um, during it and everything. So uh, yeah, uh, this was, so when I found out I was meeting with him, I found out like three months ago and um, I was like, fuck, what am I gonna talk? What am I, what are we gonna, what's the touch points I wanna hit on? And so I started this piece of paper and I keep, kept it in my fanny pack folded up and it's like, it got beat up, so I had to tape it together. Um, but, and anytime I thought of a question or a point I wanted to bring up or ask, I write it down. So this is what I'm gonna go through today and dwindle it down. Meetings at 3.40 tomorrow. So um, I'm excited. All right, um, anything else? Oh yeah, food drop, uh, getting closer, um, Whole Foods, we're still trying to figure it out. It doesn't look like it's going to be on this food drop, which is fine. Um, probably going to go to Trader Joe's now and see if they want to be a part of it. Food, Whole Foods wants to. It's just economically, it's not. It's we can't do it for what they can help us with. Um, so we're going to figure out a way to do it in the future. So it'll be good. Um, so yeah. Anything else, babe? Nope. Yeah. All right. Peace, love, and happiness.